the Lake of Gems. Long, long ago, in ancient China, genies and spirits prevailed over the human world. Some of them were good, some naughty, and some liked to make humans suffer. Another baby for us to target. <laughs> oh, come on. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> ha! Run! Fly! Basically, scoot. You see, all of the genies were terrified of silver medallions and fish nets. Hei Hang's mother, who was a witch, knew that very well. And so try as they might, the naughty genies could not get the better of Pei Hang, who grew up to be a lovely, healthy, smart boy. <sighs> oh, thank you, son. Huh? The sewing season is always busy. I have an idea. This makes it all so easy. Our son is truly exceptional. It's time to send him into the world to learn and become even more extraordinary. You are absolutely right. I am so hungry. Son, your mother and I have decided that it is time you trained under a teacher and learned an art. You must go to Chang'an and study with the great Master Pin Tu there. But I don't want to leave you both. That is why we need you to leave now, so that by the time we're old, you would have learned a trade to provide for yourself and for us. Pei Hang embarked on her journey to Chang'an and became the finest pupil of Master Pin Tu. Hey, Hang, you have been my finest pupil, and I know you will make me proud. You are now capable to take on any trade of your choice. I want to go back to my village and help my father. I will also open a school for my villagers who have not been fortunate enough to learn from masters like you. This is what I would expect you to do. But before you leave, you must find your wife. Oh, marriage, n n no. Ha, ha, ha. There is something for all of us. That night, as he slept, Pei Hang had a dream. Pei Hang, Pei Hang. The fairy of the moon tied this cord around us when we were born, for we are meant to be together. You will soon find me. I am Yin Young. Wait, wait. You will soon find me. I am Yin Young. I am coming, Yin Young. I am coming. I am coming, Yin Young. I am coming. Pei Hang could not get the image of Yin Young out of his mind. But he had to leave Chang'an, for he had promised his parents that he would start that day. As he was traveling on the outskirts of Chang'an, he suddenly felt very thirsty. <sighs> Perhaps I can quench my thirst at that nearby hut. Kind mother, 
Would you please give me a glass of water? Wait here. Ni, nee, get some water for this young man, please. Do take a seat. Here, take this water. <gasps> Yin Yang! Oh, Yin Yang! I told you you will find me. I was afraid that you were just a dream, but oh, I love you so, Yin Yang. Marry me. Please marry me, my sweet Yin Yang. She can't. What? W why? We have the red knot. We're meant to be together. I have already promised her hand to the Mandarin of Chang'an. I had no choice. The Mandarin is a powerful man. If I do not have Yin Yang married to him, he will put us into prison. I will speak to the Mandarin. There has to be a way. I'm afraid, young man, there is no way. You can't threaten her into marrying you. I shall complain to the Emperor for misusing your power. By the time you reach the Emperor's palace, I shall have married Yin Yang. Ah! The pain is back. When will you get me the medicine, old woman? I need the jade pestle and mortar from the Lake of Gems to make the medicine. That is the only cure. But who would venture? You. You get the jade pestle and mortar for me. If you do, I shall let Yin Yang marry you. I promise. Just get me rid of this terrible pain. I will. I promise. Oh, don't. It is too dangerous. No one has seen the jade pestle and mortar ever. I shall do whatever it takes to win you, my dear. I give you a month. You should not have promised him that. This was the only way. The lake of gems is far away, and the path is riddled with dangers. You have to cross four deadly rivers: blue, white, red, and black. Each river is as huge as a sea, and is full of monstrous fishes. Beyond the rivers is Mount Sumi of the genies. Goodness knows what magic tricks they will play on you. How will you get beyond the mountain to the Lake of Gems? I will have to find a way to get there. Take these white seeds. They appear only on the full moon every two hundred years. There are six of them here. Whatever you use each seed on will shrink in size a million times over. This is all I can give you to help you. Pei Hang accepted the seeds and left. But before starting for Mount Sumi, he went to his parents' home to see them and told them everything. The white seeds can help you shrink the rivers, but won't the genies be really angry with you for shrinking their mighty rivers? I will just have to risk it. Hmm. Come with me. These seeds appear once in three hundred years on a new moon night. Each seed will put whatever you use it on to its right size, and each of these seeds is wrapped in fish net, so no genie will be able to touch it. Thank you, mother. Give me some fish net, please. Here it is. Pei Hang went on his way, and after a long, dangerous trek, reached the Blue River. The fishes in that river began attacking him, even as he stood on the bank, nervously. Pei Hang cast one of his white seeds into the river. The seed works. Now to find the Red River. Pei Hang cast a seed in the red, white, and black rivers, managing to jump over them easily. The genies from Mount Sumi were watching him. They made an appearance. How dare you come into our realm, you human! I just want the jade pestle and mortar from the Lake of Gems. 
You ruined our rivers. Put them right, right now. I will, but only after you give me the jade pestle and mortar. How can we trust you? Look at these red seeds. They will put each river back in its right size. <laughs> Fishnet! Fishnet! I just need the pestle and mortar. The genies took Peihang to the home of the great genie of the Lake of Gems. Ah, you arrogant humans. You want the pestle and the mortar. There they are. <gasps> this! Yes. And feel free to fill it up with the gems from the Lake of Gems. Take as many as you want. And mind you, if you don't leave with the pestle and mortar before sunset, you shall be stuck here forever. Pei Hang sat there, wondering how he would ever be able to carry that gigantic pestle and mortar. He suddenly got an idea. If you want your rivers to come back, help me fill the mortar with gems. We won't! Remember, I have the red seeds in fish nets. Fine! Now to carry the pestle with all the gems. It worked! Thank you, gentlemen, and I shall be on my way now. The genies watched in wonder as Pei Hank carried the pestle and mortar, filled with gems in his arms, and left for home. On his way back, he casts the red seas in each river after crossing them, so that they return to their original size. <sighs> Just a day remains for the month to be over. The Mandarin will not wait another minute before marrying you. He must be on his way here already. I am here. I think we must get married now. Nobody comes back from the rivers. You are one day early. Like I said, uh, nobody comes back from the rivers. We must marry now. I won't marry you. Put us in prison if you will. Now don't force me to do that. Sir, here's a letter from the emperor for you. It's urgent. F from um the emperor? How dare you force a maiden to marry you? I am warning you. Step back or prepare to be punished. So, Pei Hang wrote to the emperor before he left? No, he asked me to write to the emperor. After all, Pei Hang and I are the ones meant to get married, aren't we? You may leave now. The Mandarin was about to leave. Take the medicine for your headaches before leaving. W why Because it is wrong to let someone suffer when there is a cure at hand. Pei Hang and Ying Yang got married. And then Pei Hang cast the white seed into the mortar, and both the pestle and the mortar, including all the thousands of gems, Pei Hang had gathered, became full size, making Pei Hang the richest man in China. But he and Ying Yang used the money to open schools for poor children throughout China and lived happily ever after. <laughs>